The Challenge of the Yukon. I'm King, call you Husky. King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. Harry Jenkins, a well-to-do writer, came to the Yukon to gather material for a book. He'd heard much of the men who rushed to the North Country to get rich quick. With a good outfit and sturdy dogs, he set out to see these miners, the lucky ones and the unfortunates. He visited Indian tribes and presented them with gifts. It delighted him to see their faces glow when they saw the great, heavy gold watch he carried. It was early morning when Jenkins and his guide, Pierre Beaumont, waved a last goodbye to Chief Charlie and his people. Bye, Chief. Maybe we'll see you again sometime. Harry Jenkins didn't know it, but that was his last time to see Chief Charlie or anyone else. The next day... Sergeant Preston stopped for a moment at the Indian village. No, I'm sorry, Charlie. I want to get to Half Mile this afternoon. The next time I come by this way, I'll plan to spend more time with your people. <laughs> White man always much in hurry. My people miss see red coat. Well, this kind of weather, that red coat has to be covered with something to keep out the wind. Me sell white man's skin yesterday. Keep him warm. Oh, that was a good deal for him. Him not like other men come here for gold. Him carry big gold clock. Me want trade skin. Oh, trade the skins for the watch, eh? Him not do. Uh, what was his name? Him name Jenkins. Him may be big chief. Well, if he is, I never heard of him. Get the dogs up, King. <laughs> Goodbye, Charlie. Charlie wish Sergeant Preston safe journey. Good trail. Thanks. Good luck to you and your people. On, King! <laughs> On you huskies! Uh, with the wind at our back, we're making better time than I expected. At least we don't have to break a trail this trip. No snow for the last two days. Looks like we'll get some before nightfall, though. I... Uh, seems King's found something ahead there. All right, fella, all right. Ho, oh, you huskies, ho! Oh. What's that, you... A man. Yes, King. He's dead. Oh, tracks of another man. Looks like he put up a fight for his life. The other man shot him and then got in the sled and kept going. Well, maybe we can find out who he is. There's no money in his pockets, nothing to... Oh, what's this? A keychain with a tag on it. Yeah, let's see. Harry A. Jenk Jenkins. Why, that's the man Charlie was telling me about. Whoever was with him robbed and murdered him. We'll get him on the sled and then follow those tracks, King. There, that does it. All right, boy. On King! Are you husky? With King in the lead, the dogs raced over the frozen trail while Sergeant Preston kept his eyes on the tracks in the snow. But as the team neared half mile, the Mountie knew his job would be doubly difficult, for the tracks of the sled he'd been following were obliterated by countless others. A short time later, Sergeant Preston arrived in town. Well, we'll stop at the hotel, King. Whoever killed Jenkins robbed him. So he came into town with plenty of money. Come on, you dumb mutt. All right, get in line there. Come on over with the dog. Well, his dog doesn't follow him, boy. I don't blame you. That's no way to treat an animal. Yeah, here we are, fella. Well, sir, what 
can I... <laughs> Hello, Sam. Thought you were a customer, Sergeant. That is, till I recognized King there. I get fooled every time when you got your tunic covered up. Me with a memory for phases, too. Well, it's been a long time since we've been to Half Mile. But, Sam, we didn't stop in just to pay a friendly call. No? Well, then... Have I... you had any guests come in last night or early this morning? Well, matter of fact, there's only been one. He came in late last night. He did, huh? What's his name? A fella named Beaumont. Pierre Beaumont. Stranger in town? Eh, not exactly. <laughs> I've seen him around before. Only I never saw him flash as much money around as he did this time. What room is he in, Sam? I'd like to talk to him. Why didn't you say so, Sergeant? He left here, checked out not 15 minutes ago. Said he was going to head for Simmons' cabin up the trail. Well, what's he look like? Oh, he's big. I'd say about six feet two. Kind of dark-skinned, bushy black eyebrows. Then he must have been the one we saw outside. Huh? Oh, we saw someone outside a few minutes ago. Seemed to have a lot of trouble getting his dogs together. I think I understand why now. You got something on him? Yes, yes, we have. Come on, King. Come on. He's gone. See, now, I wish I'd known you were looking for him. What you wanted for? We'll tell you about it when we get back, Sam. Right now, King and I are heading for Simmons' cabin. Along most of the well-used trails in the north, there were prospectors' cabins with latch strings hung on the outside of the doors. It was the custom for any traveler to pull the string, which raised the inside wooden bar, walk in, and make himself at home. There was always dry wood in the stove and a square block of matches in sight, so that a man coming in might make a fire with the least possible waste of time. Simmons' cabin was one of these. Inside, the stove was glowing while an old prospector warmed his feet in front of it. His companion walked over to the window, raised his horny hand to shade his eyes, and peered out. Well, it looks like we're going to have company, Pete. Yeah. Well, I don't know who it might be, but from the way he was yelling at his dogs, it didn't sound like good company to me. Well, I can tell what a man's like from the way he treats his dogs, I always say. Yeah. Yeah. What's that you were whittling, Mike? Yeah, got in mind to whittle a boat with an Indian sitting in it. Uh, come on in, stranger. Make yourself to home. That's what we're doing. Thanks. Hang your mackinaw over there, stranger. Yeah. Got anything to eat here? There's beans in the cupboard. If you have a mind to fix them. That's mighty hospitable to you, gents. Thanks. You were talking about dogs a minute ago, Mike. Dogs? <laughs> Worthless pack of hounds. That's all? Well, now every man's welcome to his own opinion. But I had a dog once, smart as husky that ever walked. Uh, which one was that? Called her Pussyfoot. Yes, sir, now there was a dog. Yes, sir, the best dog in the Yukon. My money, I'll take a horse. Oh, no, horses don't get far on these trails up here. Ain't as dependable. Did I ever tell you about the time Pussyfoot saved my life, Mike? Yeah, sure. I heard that story 60 times if I heard it once. And every time you tell it, you make it bigger. Well, maybe the stranger here ain't heard it yet. You're right, I haven't. And I can do just as well without hearing it. Well, the stranger don't like dogs, and that's that. But you do. And I can tell you a story about a dog that'll make Pussyfoot look like a pike. Now, oh, wait a minute. Ain't any dog can do this that. This dog can, and I'll prove it. Uh, you better. I'd like to know if any husky smarter than Pussyfoot... Sounds like more company coming. Well, whoever he is, if he wants something to eat, he can fix it himself. Just like I had to. You ain't crippled, stranger. Well, I'm in luck. Come on, boy. Yeah, looks like we got a full house tonight. Come on over here by the stove, mister. Well, thanks. What's that dog doing in here? Oh, well, he's with me. Well, he can stay outside with the rest of them. Maybe you didn't hear what I said. He's with me. He's welcome, as far as Mike and me are concerned, mister. Sight more welcome than certain people I'm looking at right now. Oh, are you at a brain? Uh, you, uh, you men together? Us? Shucks, no. I, I mean, we ain't all together. Mike and me are, but the, the stranger here he just got in a while back. I see. Have you had anything to eat? I'll cook some beans in a little while. It's every man for himself here. Yes, so I see. Oh, what's the matter, boy? You encouraging you, huh? <laughs> Pete? That husky there reminds me an awful lot of this other dog I was telling you about. Oh, oh, yeah. I want to hear that story. Mister, maybe you like dogs. 
good-looking one like that one following around, you sure can pick him. Yes, he's a fine dog. Well, Pete here claims his husky saved his life once. She did, too. Uh, the dog mm. I'm telling about didn't only save one life, Pete. He saved a whole community. A whole community? Oh, now that's a tall one. It's a truth. Well, whose dog was it? Sergeant Preston's dog, husky named King. I don't care whose dog it is. There ain't any of them worth what it takes to feed them. Yeah, I've finished eating if you want to cook some beans. Yeah. Uh, take off your Mackinac, mister, and make yourself to home. Come on, Mike. Get over your story. If that was such a smart dog, I want to hear about it. You remember the time they had the diphtheria epidemic up at Fort Mon? Yeah. You remember it, mister? Yes. Yes, I remember it well. The only thing that could stop the folks from dying off like flies was to get serum to the town and get it there fast. I know that. Uh, sure, any fool does. But there wasn't a drop to be had. And it was a hundred miles to Hawkinsville and back to get it. What I want to know is where this here dog you're talking about comes in. I'm getting to that. Now, you see, it happened like this. Sergeant Preston got into town with that there dog of his. And once he took the situation in, he sent King off with a message in his collar, mind you. All that way while she stayed in town and worked with the minister to save what lives he could. And would you believe it? The dog left in early morning and by ten o'clock that night he was back with serum in his collar and a note from the dock in Hawkinsville saying he was following with more. That's how a dog saved the whole community. <laughs> well, sir, I tell you, I wouldn't have believed it. You mean you saw that dog leave Fort Mun and come back with the serum? Saw him? Why, man, I was right there, working along with the sergeant myself. Me and him are great pals. He's a fine fellow, Pete. I'd stand that dog of his against anything in the Yukon. Uh, I've heard enough of dog stories. I'm turning in. You can ask Doc Burns the next time you go to Hawkinsville, if you don't believe me. When I see my friend Sergeant Preston, I'll get it in writing. Uh, anyone got the time? I'm getting a little tired myself. Yeah, I got the time. Just a minute. Just about... Hmm, watch it stop. That's so. Yeah, let's have a look at Wait it. Wait a minute, stranger. I don't show this watch to everybody. No. Probably for a good reason, Pierre Beaumont. What? I said, let me see that watch. A little demanding for a stranger. How'd you know my name? It's my business to know all about men like you. Hey, hey, a man's a stranger this. until he introduces himself, Beaumont. I'm Sergeant Preston of the Mounted Police. Sergeant Preston? You don't have anything on me, Monty. If your conscience is clear, you'll hand that watch over now. Yeah? Well, suppose I... Hey, look out! He's grabbing for the knife! Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> quiet, boy, quiet. <laughs> Now I'll have a look at that watch. Well, no wonder he wouldn't show it to me. Engraved Harry A. Jenkins, 1895. He's our man, all right. That was some sock you landed on his chin, Sergeant. I don't know how you managed it with all them heavy clothes on. I thought it strange you didn't take off your pocket. I didn't want to let him see my red coat. And I hated to interrupt your story. Um, Sergeant. Yeah. <laughs> Appears like you've got some explaining to do, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I uh, knew Pete would never believe me if I hadn't said I was there in Fort Mon with you. I uh, heard the story from Doc Burns, you see. Oh, that's all right, Mike. If we weren't friends before, we are now. Well, I'll handcuff the prisoner, and King and I'll keep a watch on him tonight. Understand, boy? <laughs> then tomorrow, it's back to Half Mile. Chief Charlie, to identify Beaumont, he's as good as hot. You mean King here guards prisoners, too? Oh, yes. And you can take my word for it. As far as King was concerned, Mike didn't exaggerate the story he just told at all. <coughs> yes, King, the case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you each week at this time, originated in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. This is Jack McCarthy speaking. <laughs>